the land of seven provinces. Kyushu gave me a chance to wind down as I meandered on palatial paths and winding canals and rekindled a fondness for some of the most adorable creatures on earth. Most of all, Kyushu was perfect in setting the tone for me to move on to the final leg of my journey. Okinawa doesn't have a train system as such. It has something called Yui Railway, which is a monorail system which takes you from the airport into Naha City, which is the capital city, so very helpful indeed. And it takes you to all the interesting sights and sounds, and it's actually a very nice view once you're traveling on it. Although Shuri is a district in Naha City, now in the northeast, it used to be a city on its own as well as the royal capital of the Ryukyu Kingdom. Okinawa, yes, this is the southernmost prefecture in Japan. It's a stretch of islands in between mainland Japan and Taiwan and it boasts some absolutely amazing coral reefs. Hailing from Urumashi, Okinawa, this petite friend of mine is a model and radio reporter. Hi, I'm Nina. Welcome to Okinawa! I arrive in true Malaysian timing and apologize to Nina for my slight lateness, but she is gracious about it and welcomes me with a traditional Okinawan garland. So this one was built in the 16th century. It's a replica because the old one kind of perished, I guess, but it's got a lot of Chinese influence. Now this marks the area of uh, Shuri within Naha itself. Since 1429, Shurijo Castle was predominantly served as the administrative center and residence of the Ryukyu Kingdom for about 450 years. But actually, this place is considered a uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site, or one of the castles within the Ryukyu uh, Kingdom back in the day. Ah, oh, look at that view. It's beautiful. Yeah, you can see the sea from up here. That's part of the vantage point of building a castle atop, just so they can kind of foresee the rest of the kingdom out there. Oh, look at this. Huge. This is the main square, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the main place. So that must be the kingdom, the it's house. Kingdom. The master yeah. of the house lives in there. And you can actually really tell from the dragons on top that, again, oh. that Chinese influence, the gold, the red. Well, actually, it's not red, vermilion. Resembling the Chinese temples that we have in Malaysia, the architectural design of Seiden, or main hall of Shurijo Castle, is significantly distinct from other castles in Japan. Kubisan, what makes Shurijo Castle so special. The city is a city of the 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 city of so how old is this actually? こちらは1712年頃に建てられました。この奥の方にも古い木段が残っています。こういった遺構があるので世界遺産に指定されています。Very scary walking across it, isn't it? 怖い怖い。So where did all of this Chinese influence come from? 琉球は1300年代に あの、中国の属国のようなものに琉球はなったんですね。それでまあ赤い色だったり、龍が聖殿の中に33体いたりとか、また琉球国王はお正月の儀式の時に北殿の方から北京に向かって拝む儀式もありました。as the sun dips into the horizon with hues of vermilion that match the walls of Shuijo Castle, Nina and I call it a day so that I may ready myself for more of Okinawa tomorrow. We're off to the northern part of the island today, to a cultural theme park in the area of Yomitan. Our first stop in Murasaki Mura is here at this workshop where Nina and I get a tutorial on how to create designs using indigo dye. I learned that several objects such as marbles and clothes pins are used to form different shapes into the fabric. Once the fabrics are saturated with the dye, they are washed under the tap until the water runs clear and then dried. Oh. Wow. Ooh, so. Wow. How did yours come up? Hi. Hi. Oh, today, today. Oh man, yours looks really nice. Wow, it's beautiful. Yours is really good. I liked it. Mine still looks like a child's done it. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. Uh, 
Oh, all right. Practice, practice, I yeah. guess, right? Among the other craft workshops available here is painting clay lion figurines known as Shisa. But we decide to up our game a notch and try something more challenging. Look at Oh, this. Beautiful. So th this is going to be true blue Okinawan glass. Mm -hmm. The type of glasswares produced are based on the American taste. So you'll see them in the form of wine glasses, punch balls, and the likes of which. Now you gotta make sure you are wrapped up because you're dealing with a molten glass, which is, I don't know how hot it is, but if it touches your skin, mm -hmm. it's not gonna be pretty. The process consists of the three basic steps of melting, shaping, and cooling the glass, which might sound easy enough, but is in fact precarious when it comes to the execution. Whoa, it's like a big glowing orange light bulb at the moment. They're gonna make the hole so it looks like a cup. I hope it looks like a cup, because that's what I was aiming to make. Ah, it looks like a passable cup to me, and so does Nina's. We leave our handiwork here though, as it takes about half a day to finish cooling. Oh, so windy. Thank you. Oh, so windy. Mm. Alright. Henley! Yes. I know you wanna do your own thing, so I will see you later. You're gonna go? Yeah. Okay. Oh. All on my own. What do I do? Boy stuff. Karate! <laughs>Since Nina has left me to my own devices here at the Murasaki Mura, I zoom straight for the karate dojo, and not a moment too soon as my sensei seems to be awaiting my arrival. There are three main styles of karate practiced here in Okinawa, and that are taught in the rest of the world as well. My lesson today is in the school of Uechi, named so after its founder, Kanbun Uechi. When you get into you center yourself. It's almost like natural. So once you learn here, your body follows. But for me, learning, 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 overthinking. So my movement is not natural. <laughs> I think practice, practice, practice. Okay. Have a good exam, Thank you very much. <sighs> so that was my first session uh, learning the Uichi Ryu style of um, karate. Actually, karate started off in Okinawa, so uh, it's an honor for me to be able to learn from Sensei on the island itself. And once you get past all of that, the learning of the moves and that defensive blocking and counter-attacking, your mind is kind of like all boggled and scrambled, but then kind of get into that zone. And I think that's why he wanted me to kind of center myself at the beginning of the lesson and close my eyes and semi-meditate, was to be present once I learned all the moves. And then the, the flow came. <sighs> What a great experience. Having learnt all I could in my brief but gratifying session with Uechi Sensei, I move on to a village which is an uncanny recreation of an ancient Okinawan settlement. I also grab the chance to dress according to my surroundings. Konnichiwa! And the gentleman playing the uh, traditional sanchin there. Not the usual makeup, of course. He, I think he doubles as the jester. But this is actually a, a very traditional house. It's a replica, of course. It's a Nakasone house uh, found in the Zakini region. And architecturally wise, it is very airy. You can sort of see that it's been adapted for the uh, Okinawa climate. Uh, loads of windows, hardly any walls at all, actually, just to get all the air flowing through, making it very cool indeed. I've actually been noticing these really cute lions pretty much everywhere around Okinawa. And they're actually Shisa. They're like the gods of safety and they keep away all the bad spirits. And actually, these ones in particular, the below writing is the artist's name. So uh, they've got different styles. Some of them are comedic, some of them are really scary or very, very traditional. Hats are absolutely amazing. They're inspired by the lotus that opens up at the top as the shroud. A little bit of mystery. 
There are musical performances held throughout the day here, but now I'm catching one of the grander ones, which is the parade of Ryukyuan royalty. The showcase entails a vibrant folk dance called Eisa and a comical performance of lion dance known as Shishi Mai. Other recreations of the ancient Ryokuan life here include pottery making as well as this right here. Ah, hello, Mr. Buffalo. How are you? How are you? Now, actually, Okinawa is very famous for producing a lot of sugar cane or sugar, and uh, this traditional way is called sataya, where they use a buffalo to wind around a certain area, driving the manglers in the middle where the people are actually pushing through uh, the raw sugar cane. Out comes the juice, they dry that, and uh, they produce uh, the actual very dark sugar. And there's a sweet actually in Okinawa that they eat called kura sato, which is still bought today and extremely yummy. But actually, you know what? I think I've got to meet Nina now, so I better get out of these clothes and uh, get sensibly dressed, I suppose. Bye! Hello, Nina! You're here finally! How are you? You alright? <laughs> I've been wandering around all morning in a uh -huh. fancy outfit. Oh. Ryukyumura is just full of architecture, beautiful culture, tons of art. Oh, and all this dancing. Is. All this oh, dancing. How was that? It was good, yeah. Okay. Speaking of art, mm. want to try out an instrument that Okinawa is known for? Ha! Ooh. If you're talking about the Shanshin. Yes. I am all over it because I've been learning all morning, just been watching. Try? Yeah, we should we should go have a little try. Hey, Miss Konnichiwa. I see the sunshin literally means three strings. So this was made out of python skin. Mm -hmm. That's a little uh, faux python. Actually, this this wooden head here, the uh, the front bit is one solid piece of wood. And actually, mm -hmm. they're quite light. It's almost like a, yeah, a banjo. It's a little, yeah, it's heavy. Or like a little ukulele mm -hmm. in, in, yeah. in Hawaii. <laughs> Can he teach us a, a, a song? Yes, Okinawan traditional yeah. song. He can teach us. Saki ni wa no naka no ibara no ha. We strum our way into the day's end and rendezvous again at Okinawa World, which is some 13 kilometers southeast of Naha City. And Lee, thanks for waking up this early and meeting me here. No problem, no worries. Anything for you, Nina. And I brought you the Okinawa ah. glass that we made the yes. other day. These look great, look at that. Fantastic. But you know, you could have just passed me these at lunch or something, that would have been easier. <laughs> and I also thought you want to see the longest Okinawa Ah, oh, so we're going to go caving? Yes, cave. The 890 meter walkway of Gyokusendo is pretty long for us to explore on our own, so thankfully we have Teruya-san to guide us through this cave. Now actually the Asia Grand Hall is very large, it's, it can actually hold an, a six story building. Is it one of the largest in Okinawa? Yes, uh, this is the largest in Okinawa. Yes, so yes, this is the Bell of the Rising Dragon. Oh. So why is it named like that? Uh, it looks like dragon eggs, that's why. <laughs> there are spectacular formations throughout the cave, such as speared ceiling, as well as bodies of water that trickle away into a gushing waterfall. It's so clear. Yes, it's so beautiful. Clear. Where, where does the water come from? Come from the underground. Underground, the spring yeah. water. Now there's no wonder that it's so clear it's because it's got to make its way through so much rock and it kind of gets filtered, so it's very pure water. Also home to a fossil square with the remains of various Okinawan creatures, Gyokyu Sendo Cave, in its entire length of five kilometers, is one of the largest stalactite grottos in Japan. And Lee, did Hi. you have a good time? Yes! Mm. Okinawa is awesome. Thank you so much for showing me around. There's so much to do here. Uh huh. I hope you enjoyed that. I did. I did. Thank you once again. Next yeah, time next I come, time. I'll give you a call. I put it off since I arrived in Okinawa because of uncertain weather conditions, but today I finally get to go to one of the island's best dive spots. What an awesome day to do some snorkeling. Now, of course, you have to go into the ocean if you're in Okinawa. Look at this thing. Beautiful crystal clear waters. 
Very shallow though, not much you can actually sort of go down and explore to. So I, I'm not surprised there's so many people snorkeling here. No longer wet behind my ears when it comes to exploring the Okinawan Sea, I've worked up an appetite and I'm enticed to look around Kokusai Dori Street in Naha City for some local grub. Some of these ingredients look rather familiar to me, but preparation wise, they prove to be different from what I've had. Oh, I've been waiting for this dish for ages. Now, this typically would be found in every home around Okinawa. This is actually a very local cuisine. It's more like home cooked food. Arigato gozaimasu. Looks absolutely delicious. So, we've got a few things here. I'm having tofu yo, which is fermented tofu. Some bitter melon called goya drenched in plum vinegar, gurukun or banana fish in karage style, and the Okinawan staple umibudo. The health benefits of eating umibudo are very good. High in minerals and really good things like that, but very low in calories. So, it's almost like eating zero calories, but getting all the benefits from eating something nice and green. After enjoying this speciality meal, I make my way to the northwestern tip of the island, where the Ocean Expo Commemorative National Government Park of Okinawa is located. Beautiful ocean, absolutely fitting meaning behind the word Chura Umi, which this place is named after. It's in the Okinawan dialect, and uh, it's actually placed right on the tip of the peninsula of Motobu. And up until about 10 years ago, it was the largest aquarium in the world. But sadly, that was overtaken. But still, this place is a fantastic place to see the wildlife within the ocean. So here's my guide now, Hiro-san. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. How are you? First off, Hiro-san leads me to the Dolphin Lagoon, where I'm about to get up close and personal with the intelligent and playful creatures. So there's three. One, yes. two, three. So what type of fish is this? Shishamo des. Shishamo. Shishamo des. Oh, their favorite food. And how much of this do they go through every day? After communing with Poi and her friends, I head to the Okichan Theatre for a show by some false killer whales and Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins. Inside the aquarium, a massive tank named the Kuroshio Sea houses abundant marine life such as gigantic Alfred Manta swimming over live corals. <gasps> Whale sharks? Yes. How many whale sharks do you have here? Three. And how long have they been living in this tank for? Now, if you actually think about the sheer logistics of this thing, two million gallons of water are just in this enclosure itself. The aquarium, and we're only staying dry because of that 60 centimeters worth of acrylic glass, which is, oh my gosh. Like the biggest windows I've ever seen. As if getting to see these whale sharks through that acrylic glass is not amazing enough, Hiro-san takes me above the tank for a better look. This is a different perspective from what you see down below. This is the inner workings of the aquarium. The top bit, where actually they, they feed all of the fish, including the whale sharks. So they're just about to start feeding them. And they have different areas, different platforms or, or feeding stations for uh, I guess each of the different whale sharks, because they're so big, and the reason why is actually because they need to monitor how much each one is, is being fed or, or eating. What is that they're eating? It's uh, very, very small plankton mm -hmm. and a small shrimp. Small shrimp and yes. ah. Because they're filter feeders, um, they, the food that they actually eat is like little krill, little shrimp. Um, so they actually suck it from the water. No teeth, no chewing involved. They literally... Ticking the Okinawa Churaumi Aquarium off my list, I find that I'm finally done. As I head on out, I stop by the beautiful Sanaga Beach for one more glorious sunset in Okinawa. I guess that's uh, Okinawa done. Tick it off the list. I was a little bit hesitant in coming in the first place because everybody speaks so nicely about it. It's like the best place to go for a long weekend, best place to catch some sun rays, do a bit of plane spotting while you're at it. 
But actually coming here and meeting Nina and her sharing these beautiful islands with me, it just opened up my eyes to say, actually, you know what? All of those people were right. There's so much history. There's so much culture here. I had a tremendous amount of fun. But I guess those rain clouds should signify the fact that I'm going to head back to Tokyo. I just got to find a way there. <laughs> See you, Okinawa. There is a heaviness in my heart as I make my way back to Tokyo, a feeling no traveler is a stranger to once reaching the end of a trip, a bittersweet wondering of how suddenly fast time seems to have passed. There's often questions that need answered before venturing off on one of these adventures. Will I be able to eat the food? Will I be able to get to A to B, you know? It's, it's difficult, it is, but all of these questions you can only answer yourself. You can only find those answers by coming out here and exploring for yourself. Because if I didn't, I would never have been able to experience half the things that I've experienced. I mean, for instance, the sumo, being able to go behind the scenes of one of the more oldest sports in the world and seeing the dedication, the sweat, the blood that these guys put in 24 7. How about navigating the waters of Oki Islands, those cool blue azure waters, fantastic, it's absolutely beautiful. And that climate is almost like Malaysia itself. And of course, that Oki beef. Don't forget the Oki beef. Very delicious. Very, very delicious indeed. I learned a few skills. I learned how to perform shodu, the large or gigantic calligraphy skill with those beautiful girls from Chugoku. And those were just kind of like the tip of the iceberg of the characters I actually met. Some of the outstanding ones had to be that little lady who taught me how to cook the sanuki udon. She's so funny. When traveling extensively in a brand new country, be it just visiting or going on holiday, it's often very overwhelming, isn't it? Just the thought of being somewhere you, you don't really know, nothing's familiar, the language is different, the food, what do you eat? Completely different taste palette. And that, I think, goes for, say, for, for Japan. It's, it's a place of wonder. And when I look back at everything that I've drawn and painted, cooked and tasted, tried and tested, I guess all of these experiences, I want you to experience them, you know? And they're very easily available. You just gotta get yourselves out here. And that first step is buying a train ticket because the train systems over here have access pretty much to the entire country. Beyond anime, sushi, and kimonos, there simply is so much more to the land of the rising sun that even I have yet to explore. What else is there to say? Japan's waiting for you, so come over.